within five days. And any actions taken tonight on final development plan design review or minor amendments are final. Any recommendations made on preliminary subdivision plan requests tonight will be referred to the City Council for final actions at the third council meeting of this month or at the first council meeting of next month if associated with a zoning or major amendment. Any recommendations made on rezoning requests, major amendments, future land use, amendments or ordinance amendments tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the first council meeting of next month. Council meetings are held at 7 p.m. here in the Carnegie Town Hall and are televised. The Planning Commission will first approve the consent agenda and then the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, planning staff and the Planning Commission apply the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the Shape Sioux Falls 2035 Comprehensive Plan. Second, planning staff recommends approval of the request. Third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the Sioux Falls Zoning Ordinance. For the regular agenda, the following normal public hearing procedure will be followed for each item. By first requesting planning staff to present a brief report on that item. Second, the petitioner or representative will be requested to come forward and make a statement or answer questions. After the petitioner has spoken, anyone from the audience who wishes to address the agenda item shall be recognized. Then the Planning Commission will discuss the matter further and take appropriate action. We ask that anyone addressing the Planning Commission move to the podium microphone and identify themselves for the record. Please limit your comments to less than five minutes. As a courtesy to everyone here tonight, we ask that you please either turn off or silence your electronic devices. This meeting is being telecast on CityLink and will be rebroadcast Friday at 7 p.m., Saturday at 10 a.m., and Wednesday at 1 a.m. Thank you for your cooperation. Good evening. Welcome to Carnegie uh, Town Hall. I call to order this regular meeting of the City Planning Commission. Before we get started, I would like to introduce a new planning commissioner that uh, is joining us this evening. Her name is Diane DeCoyer, and welcome to our planning commission. This is uh, Diane's first meeting tonight. I'd also like to... Uh, <laughs> It might take a while to get your name tag, but <coughs> I'm sure the fellows are working on it. Right on time. <laughs> We're also being helped out tonight uh, by one of our uh, assistant city clerks. Our uh, regular secretary is ill this evening, and uh, Tamara volunteered to come in and fill in for uh, Connie this evening. Thank you. At this time, the Planning Commission will approve the consent and regular agenda. Uh, I would like to start. I will read the consent agenda items. Mr. Chair, I'll be stepping down from the consent agenda. All right. Uh, Commissioner uh, Steve is going to step down, and gosh, Diane left us already. <laughs> Item number one is the approval of the April 4th, 2012 min minutes of the regular meeting. Number two is Platts. Number three is a rezone from the RC Recreation Conservation, Conservation District to subarea A of the Sanford Sports Complex Plan Development District for allowed uses at North Bob Holla Drive and West Benson Road. Number four is an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls amending the revised ordinance of the city by addition community gardens as a permitted land use in all zoning districts of Appendix B, the zoning ordinance. Number five is a conditional use permit in the RD residential district to allow a four unit residential building at East 45th Street and South Outfield Avenue. Number six is a conditional use permit in the C2 general commercial district to allow a daycare center at 1300 East 10th Street. Number seven, 
is a special use permit in subarea E of the Marion Place Plan Development District to allow off sale alcohol within 500 feet of a school at the southwest corner of West 26th Street and South Edna Avenue. Number eight is a conditional use permit in the C2 General Com Commercial District to allow a retail building expansion of over 15,000 square feet at West 41st Street and Southwestern Avenue. Number nine is a conditional use permit in the RD Residential District to construct two three unit residential buildings at West 53rd and T. Ellis Road. Number 10 is a final development plan in sub area A of the Dan Dugan Plan Development District to construct a warehouse at 1401 West 44th Place. Number 11 is a final development plan and minor amendment in sub area A of the Prairie Meadows Plan Development District to construct a restaurant and allow a flat roof at the southwest corner of 69th Street and South Minnesota Avenue. Number 12 is a minor amendment to the original final development plan in sub area B of the village at Heather Ridge Plan Development District to remove drive through lanes at 6100 South Old Village Place. Number 13 is a preliminary subdivision plan for the Dakota Crossing addition in the C4, O, R, A, R, C, R, D, and R, S2 districts for a multiple use subdivision at the northeast corner of West 85th Street and South Minnesota Avenue. Number 14 is a preliminary subdivision plan in the R, S2 residential district to develop a future educational and civic institutional area one half mile west of Maple Avenue and Marion Road. Are there any objections from the audience uh, to any of the items listed on the consent agenda? <coughs> Seeing none, I would ask, are there any objections from the Planning Commission members to any items listed on the consent agenda? Uh, Mr. Peter. Chair, good evening. Uh, my name is Dave Loveland and I'll be representing planning staff this evening on several items. Uh, I did want to note that we did received a request to uh, have items number four and number seven removed to the regular agenda and have those items discussed. David, I would also request that uh, we I just, put... Yep, I just did that one, item four. Item four. <coughs> I see our good friend Shauna Goldhammer is here from the zoning office. And maybe she can give us a little more explanation about the uh, the community gardens ordinance. Yep. Would there be anything else that the uh, commissioners would want off the item? If not, I would certainly entertain a motion to approve the consent items. Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve the consent with items four and seven being moved to the first two of the regular agenda. We have a motion. Would there be a second? I'll second. I have a motion and second. All in favor of signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Ladies and gentlemen, and if any of your items were on the consent agenda, you're free to leave at this time. Could we have a motion to approve the regular agenda with the additions of item number four and number seven? Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve the regular agenda, adding items four and seven from the consent agenda. We have a motion from Commissioner Gaspar. I'd second uh, that. And we have a second from uh, Commissioner Pearson. All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? The regular agenda is approved and we will start with item number four. Good evening, Shauna. Good evening, Planning Commission, members of the audience on CityLink and members here at the fine Carnegie Town Hall. 
My name is Shauna Goldhammer, and I'm the Zoning Enforcement Manager for the City of Sioux Falls. One of my roles lately has been to facilitate a group called the Urban Agriculture Task Force. It's a task force that was formulated by the City Council's Land Use Committee, and we are studying urban agriculture uses in kind of two parts, horticulture, gardening, and also animals and the keeping of different kinds of animals that would provide food sources for people in the city limits. This ordinance represents a community garden ordinance that allows, defines what a community garden is outside of our regular agriculture definition. And it also allows a community garden as a primary use by right, a permitted use in all zoning districts across the board in the city of Sioux Falls. I don't know of any other use that we do that with that is allowed in all the zoning districts. But primarily that's what it is. We're defining what a community garden is. Uh, Shape Sioux Falls, uh, our 2035 plan, encourages community garden and urban agriculture gardening as a quality of life and a way to enhance neighborhoods. And we wanna be able to, to do that. So that's what we're doing. Shauna, a question if, uh, if a citizen wanted to do this, had a vacant lot in a residential neighborhood, what would the procedures be for them? Is that would have to come down to your office to get a permit and understand? Correct. Yep. The task force was real concerned about education and um, accommodating uh, guidelines and letting those people who manage the community garden to understand our guidelines that the task force put together. So in that instance, it would ha you would ha we would encourage you to come down and get a change in use permit so we can identify uh, the lot as not vacant anymore, but as a community garden, and then also uh, be able to give you that education piece with the guidelines for community gardening. Things like uh, if you have a rain barrel, you have to label it water not for drinking and make sure it's secured down. Uh, plant materials have to be removed from the garden site December 1st. That kind of thing uh, is the education piece that we look for in the permitting process. Is the change of use pretty much handled by your office? Change in use is so done by words, my office. So in other words, it wouldn't necessarily need to be a long process to get approval to do something like that? Shouldn't take long at all. Shauna, thank you. Would anyone else have any questions for Shauna regarding item number four? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, any, uh, anyone else in the audience that would care to address that issue? If not, I would uh, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve item number four. We have a motion from Commissioner Anderson. Second. Second from uh, Nick. Any discussion? All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. David, item number seven. Well, good evening again. Uh, item number seven is an uh, item that you may have some familiar, familiarity with. It's a conditional use permit uh, for a special use permit in Subbury E of the Marion Place Plan Development District to allow off-sale alcohol within 500 feet of a school. Uh, you saw a final development plan application for this convenience store last month, so I won't get into the details of the development plan itself other than to uh, l let you know what our, con what our conditional use permit standard is for off-sale alcohol. An off-sale alcohol beverage establishment may be permitted provided it's found that the location is compatible with characteristics of surrounding uses and not injurious to surrounding properties and that a management plan be provided to address operational issues including employee training and supervision of customers, enforcement of age restrictive product sales, and smoking policy on the premises for establishments within 500 feet of a school property. The school in question is the St. Michael's Catholic School um, directly to the north, and it's located at the southwest corner of West 26th Street and South Edna Avenue. Uh, as I stated, you know, you've already reviewed the final development plan itself for this, and that was approved last month. Um, so with that, I wanted to, to state that planning staff is recommending approval of the conditional use permit subject to two conditions. The first is that no external advertising of alcohol or tobacco products on the north side of the building facing the church and school. And the second is that a security management plan must be approved by the Sioux Falls Police Department. Now the item uh, 
the question that we received was on the first condition and whether to potentially include both the east and the west facades on that condition as well. I did speak with the applicant yesterday regarding that. The applicant has no issues um, adhering to that, and I believe that they have a representative in the audience if you'd like to address any questions to them regarding that policy. So with that, uh, we received no comments on this item, and that concludes staff report. Any questions for David? David, could you explain to everybody how you measure that? Is it from yep. the building itself? to the school property? Yes, what it is, it's the outside wall of the building where the sales will be conducted to the property line of the school sub, of the school site. And that distance <clears throat> right now is 500 feet? Yes, yep. that's how we measure it. I, I believe, I'm not sure of the exact distance other than to say that it's within that 500 foot. And if that were 601 feet, it would be a non-issue? You would not be seeing this tonight, yep. Thank you, David. Yep. If, what, just one quick question. I mean, last night with the city council not uh, approving the Walmart rezone, one of the main issues in there was the proximity to the school. I mean, are they trying to send us a message that we that this shouldn't be a precedent that we should follow anymore? Or I'm wondering. I you know, I mean, I'd hate to speak for the city council itself and their intentions, but um, I, you know, I think that that issue was much more complex than this one. There's been um, several instances around the city where. Alcohol, off sale, alcohol sales have been allowed within uh, that 500 foot buffer. Oh, and I know, and that was why it was confused me a little I, bit. I believe night. that that issue had a lot more complexities associated with it than just you know, okay. the alcohol sales. Thanks. So, thanks. Thank you, David. Would there be anyone here uh, in the audience, audience that would like to address this item? Seeing none, uh, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation uh, for approval with uh, stipulations one and two, but uh, changing stipulation number one uh, to no external advertising of alcohol or tobacco products on the north, east, or west side of the building. North, east, and west side, Steve? Correct. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Steve, item number 15. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, commissioners, my name is Steve Randall with the City Planning uh, Office. I'll be representing staff on this particular item and this evening. Item 15 is uh, for Dakota Crossing townhomes. It's a conditional use permit. The applicant is Clint Ackerman with Signature Companies. It's a 12-acre site. Uh, the lots are proposed to be platted and indicated in your staff report and outlined on the screen. It's a vacant site at the present time. There was a rezoning that currently went through uh, the process with the uh, city council. At the time this application uh, was submitted, the, that rezoning was not in effect, but uh, we have enough information and along with the preliminary subdivision plan that was approved previously this evening and will be um, approved also by the, uh, by the city council, we have enough information to proceed with the conditional use. Compatibility ratings are indicated uh, to the north, there's a vacant site, to the south it's vacant with future apartments, and to the east it's vacant future drainage improvements, and to the west it's vacant future apartments. We've given it a compatibility rating of four with minor conflict potential. We believe that that can be addressed through uh, design of the project, and the applicant is proposing to construct residential fourplex townhomes on 18 lots. According to the subdivision plan, those would be located on the south side of the street running east and west along the north part of the property. The conditional use permit use uh, standard for dwellings uh, that they be located in areas where they are compatible with the adjacent uses with regard to traffic size, density, and other significant factors. There's been a lot of discussion on that recently with the uh, rezoning as a transitional use to the north into that existing neighborhood. 
it was established at the council that this transition is acceptable and that the townhomes under the current zoning uh, may be approved by conditional use. They are directly accessible to a future secondary residential street as shown on the plan. Setbacks, uh, front yard setbacks are 25, side yards of seven feet meet the minimum requirements in the RD district. There is a 35 foot rear yard indicated on the plan which exceeds the 25 minimum setback required. Parking uh, requirements are for six off street parking spots for uh, four units attached. The applicant is providing eight parking spaces in attached garages. And the landscaping plan uh, is not indicated in the applicant's plan, but as they are subdivided, landscaping requirements are waived. Uh, the applicant may address that this evening as to what landscaping requirements they have for their own development. The fire department comment, or excuse me, agency review comments from the fire department include secondary and remote access is required after 30 units. There is a phased development of the project that's indicated in the subdivision and the applicant is aware that they cannot develop more than 30 units without the second way in and out. Uh, for water and sewer, uh, individual hookups are required if they're going to subdivide the fourplex into individual townhome lots. In the drainage, uh, the preliminary plan review indicates that grading and drainage must conform to the subdivision final plans. Building plans and elevations, as shown on the screen, indicate options for one story and two story structures, slab on grade with attached garages, pitched roofs, residential siding, and stone wainscot on the garages. The preliminary subdivision plan is uh, being considered, as I mentioned, will be acted on later this month. The applicant will be required to plat the uh, individual lots as indicated in the proposed platting uh, for the conditional use and subject to the approval of the subdivision plan. Lot sizes are important for, for zoning considerations, especially the interior lots. Proposed development is generally compatible with the uh, surrounding development proposed in this uh, residential neighborhood. Uh, traffic from this higher intensity use is directed away from lower intensity uses, but does share access to those same uses, single family residential lots on the same street, and with office uses, and so street parking is going to be limited. The building elements and scale are consistent with uh, proposed development in Dakota Crossings addition. Because the application is uh, providing clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed, and does require a complete plan check by building services prior to building permit issuance. Staff is recommending approval of the conditional use permit with two conditions. The first, that the secondary and remote access required after 30 units of one or two family dwellings. The same access standard is required after 100 units in multifamily dwellings. Plat, uh, the second one is plat lot sizes that meet minimum size and setbacks required for the proposed building plans prior to obtaining a building permit. We've had no calls on this. And that concludes staff report. Thank you, Steve. Would there be any questions to Steve? Steve, one question. If So the City Council has not yet approved the preliminary subdivision plan, right? That's correct. And that's why I put that stipulation in there that they have to plat. Okay. But if we approve this and the City Council does not approve their preliminary subdivision plan, then what happens? Well, uh, I think it would probably depend on what action they would take. If they would throw the plan out completely, obviously we can't plat it according to what has been proposed here. Okay. Um, I would think that the conditional use would then have to be reapplied for. Okay. So we should hope the City Council follows our recommendations then. <laughs> they don't always. <laughs> Any other questions for Steve? Thank you, Steve. Is the petitioner here? Good evening. <clears throat> I'm Clint Ackerman with Signature Company in Sioux Falls, and I'm just here to answer any questions. Would anyone have any questions of Clint? Clint, uh, how many units in total, and maybe it, it says it here and I missed it, will this phase entail? Uh, the entire project of the townhouses will be approximately 75 units. 75 units. Yeah, and then there's an additional 25 to 28 villas that'll go in alongside in this same um, association development. Okay. Looks like a good project. We hope so. 
So thank you. Well, and it sounds like you are providing ample parking for each, for each the 75 units as yep. well as the 25 villas, correct? You went over and above to yeah, provide the amount of parking? Yeah, I think it's 1.5 per unit, but we're providing two parking stalls per unit. Okay. So there shouldn't be uh, a lot of on-street parking. Um, there's adequate garage space and also well, they're not supposed to park in the driveway, but we all know that they do, so. Okay, yeah. great, thanks. Thank you. Would there be anyone else here this evening that would like to uh, address this item? Seeing none, I would look for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of item 15. Motion from Mr. Pearson and uh, second. <laughs> Hold on, Denny, you're going to add the two stipulations, too? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank and you. I'll second that. Motion with uh, the two stipulations. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion? I think this has been pretty well aired out at uh, the last council meeting. And okay. Having said that, uh, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. That takes us to item number 16, David. Uh, good evening again. <clears throat> item number 16 is a conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to construct a mini storage facility. The applicant is Eric Willitson of Willitson Lund Engineering and the owner of the property is TS Properties. The area of, this, of the site is uh, just over two acres at 1705 East Rice Street. And for abutting zoning and land uses to the north is C2 General Commercial uh, for compatibility rating of five. To the east and to the west is also C2 General Commercial with the same compatibility rating. And to the south is the manufactured housing uh, district with a manufactured home park with a compatibility rating of three. When we look at uh, conditional use permit standard, one of uh, the things that we look at in our ordinance is that there is no specific definition or standard for mini storage. And so what we generally look at when we're looking at what, what standards to apply and what we um, ask the applicant to look at is uh, similar to a retail warehouse. And I can read that standard to you. It's such uses shall be compatible with the neighborhood character and be cited in design in such a way as to minimize their impact on adjacent residential uses. Special attention should be given to the height of the structure, parking and loading area, traffic generated, noise, lighting and landscaping. All retail merchandise shall be stored indoors. And I, that last sentence doesn't necessarily apply to many storage units. Um, the access is taken directly from East Rice Street and there are no parks, open space or schools within 600 feet. The setbacks are regulated by the C2 General Commercial District and three parking stalls have been provided for an 800 square foot office portion of the plan. Landscaping plans were not provided, but staff did want to note that one tree is required per 50 feet of frontage and at 460 feet of frontage, 10 trees are required. In addition, the applicant has provided a screen fence along the back property line against the manufactured home, home park. Uh, retail, warehouse, and mini storage are permitted uses in the C2 General Commercial District subject to the use being located at least 150 feet from a residential use. Given the adjacency of the manufactured home park, a conditional use permit is required, which is what the applicant has applied for this evening. And staff notes that the applicant has provided a screen fence six feet in height, although fence materials were not listed. Staff is requesting a full screen fence utilizing wood or other materials that would provide a full screen. Because the application has provided clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed and requires a complete plan check by zoning and building services prior to obtaining a building permit, Staff is recommending approval with the following two conditions. The first is that the screen fence on the south property line shall be composed of wood or other materials providing a full screen. And the second is that building finishes are to be factory applied earth tone colors. And uh, the applicant is here this evening. We've received no calls or comments on this item in our office and that concludes staff report. Thank you, David. Would there be any questions of David? Dave, was security discussed? Because I saw on the, the plan that it was a security fence as well. Is yes. that or yep. security screening fence? Right. And, you know, the, we do go through an agency review process as we generate comments and any concerns. The police department didn't have any comments on this application. So there's so. no set security requirement at this point, correct? No. Just nope. the fence? Yep. Right. David, uh, 
would you define the storage as neighborhood storage? Uh, we're still, you know, looking at exactly how to define this. Neighborhood storage, as we as we look at some as we've looked at some of the applications that have been specifically tailored to a residential district, um, we've looked at. Um, a little bit more of a residential design, such as, a, you know, more of an apartment garage type of a feel. This being along a specifically commercial corridor, an industrial corridor, um, you know, I wouldn't characterize this. This is more of a, a commercial mini storage. And that was my question. I can remember another one that we approved that we defined as neighborhood storage, but yep. we required stick built on that versus... Right, and that was because of the, you know, because it was within the residential subdivision itself. This is specifically along the uh, commercial and industrial corridor. So that's where the distinction comes from. And I think it would depend on how you consider the mobile home park. Yes. That, although it'd be hard to argue that's not a neighborhood. Uh, right, yep. I mean, and that's where, you know, you get into the buffering and the types of materials used on those types of things. And so. Okay, thank you, David. Yep. Would the petitioner be here? Good evening, Eric Willits and Willits Lawn Engineering. Uh, here uh, representing the owner of the project, uh, here to answer any questions you might have. Uh, obviously, we are in favor of the recommendations and the stipulations staff has uh, added to the conditional use permit. Uh, there was a previous conditional use permit for this use on the site. Uh, is my understanding that expired, and this is a, a reapplication to to complete a project. Um, we showed you some pictures of of how it will look. Um, we're certainly uh, all the landscaping requirements that uh, are required by the city will be adhered to, and uh, the screening requirements for a fence in the back we have no problem with. Um, I, I got colors of what. Uh, this is a national, uh, it's called a company called Betco uh, that provides these. Uh, it, it's a manufactured, uh, these are not going to be uh, custom built on site. This is a manufactured uh, mini storage unit, uh, that com nationwide company that provides these uh, really nice looking structure. And they offer a number of different colors that we're certainly not opposed to the earth tone uh, and, and matching them with the neighborhood. Uh, I guess we do. I uh, think that this would be an asset for the manufactured home park to, you know, have some additional storage for, for that area, but also uh, it is along uh, Rice Street in a commercial industrial area and uh, certainly uh, hope to fill it up. With that, I'd answer any questions anyone has. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Pearson. It's not a consequential question, but I'm just curious about how large those storage units are. Oh, they vary. Uh, in size and depth um, with this you know we tried to give you a range uh, but the, actually the the interior uh, walls are movable they can expand or or contract units depending on what the need is um, I don't think any of the doors you know I think the the largest or the widest door would be probably a 12 foot type wide door uh, but they are uh, able to be uh, modified inside to accommodate whatever the needs are for, well, for the people. I'm just curious, uh, the, the door being 12 foot wide, it probably wouldn't accommodate too many uh, vehicles or campers or anything like that. Then. Oh, I don't think, you know, well, 12 foot wide will certainly accommodate a vehicle, but I don't, I don't think we're looking at RV type storage here, no. I mean, we, uh, we may... Uh, want one of the units to have, say, a 10-foot sidewall or something like that, but that still wouldn't accommodate yeah. uh, those. But, I've, you know, we will conform to the uh, height limitations for the C2 zoning district, obviously. Thank you. Hmm? Mr. Chair, do you have any security plans in place other than just the fence? Well, it will be a, a secure, mm -hmm. you know, location uh, with, with the six-foot fence uh, all the way around it. Does secure um, mean... Uh, code access to it as well? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. It'll be locked at night, and and uh, there will be uh, an office on site during the day for people that want to come and rent spaces, uh, an attendant on duty, uh, locked at night with security code access. It's, it will not be open to the public to drive through. Uh, generally, the lighting will be 
uh, motion sense activated. It's not going to be lit up like a parking lot at night. Uh, it'll be dark, and, and but if security uh, is an issue, you know, lights will come on motion sensor, which is generally the way uh, a mini storage area works is, is somebody's in there and the lights come on, but otherwise it's, it's dark. Eric, do you know, do they uh, get electricity to each space or? Yes, I'm, I'm, the buildings will all have power to them and I'm, I would assume that they, they're all lighted. Uh, I guess no water, no, so no, nothing like that, but yes, power. Yeah. I can remember a discussion with uh, Officer Smith that sometimes talked to us and his concern about electricity to a lot of these storage facilities. Uh, Unfortunately, some people will use them and not the best intents, but I guess Somebody's that's up cooking to something in there, Kenny. I hopefully we'll catch them. Oh, I just... Know? I don't know, but just you got to have power for lights. <laughs> just a cautioner. <laughs> understand, sir. Thank you. Where would you have the... Where are the lights going to be? I mean, if thinking about if I was a neighbor in that area, I wouldn't want anything really high. That oh, no, the, like pack-mounted okay. uh, building lights. On the building? On the building. Okay. You know, no pole lights. Are anticipated anything like that, and certainly lights inside, you know, light yeah. switch type thing. Okay. You know, even during the day, you need a light probably in there. So, thank you. Right. Any other questions for Eric? Thank you, Eric. Well, thin on the crowd tonight, Kenny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> would there be any anyone else here that would uh, like to address this particular item? Members, hi, thank you for your time. My name is uh, Jeff Schooler. I'm manager uh, along with Steve Connell here at Hidden Meadows. We are actually representing the manufactured housing community. Could you just back up one slide? Like to the um, right behind there on Sage Place. If you look at Wayland, just off Rice Street, that's where our office is at. And I, I guess when I heard about this, I was excited. I think it's a good idea. Um, that lot's been vacant. There's been a lot of trash there in the back. Uh, you know, something where it you know, has to be mowed occasionally. And, uh, so it's fine, empty, but I think it's exciting to build something there. Um, if you look at the building just to the, I guess you'd say, east, those two buildings right there, they have the, the backs that back up next to the residential spaces. Um, quiet, good area back there. There's some fencing along that area, and then the Casey's, which, which is on Jessica, on the other side, also faces the rear faces, and they have vinyl fencing. Uh, vinyl fencing is the no maintenance, you know, really provides some good uh, uh, privacy for the, the residents. I, we had several calls on this straight away when the, the notices came up, um, you know, from the residents themselves, and my apologies, I never did call the city, didn't think about it, should have probably, um, but they did have concerns about the noise the lighting, uh, the traffic, and <clears throat> was I was hoping to see a plan where we'd have a back edge where those residences could maintain privacy. The fences that they're allowed to put up um, for us to keep our manufactured housing license is a chain link fence. So it's not like they can put up large fencing to you know, keep their property private, and that has a lot to do with safety and, and whatnot, as you can imagine. So I was when I'm looking at uh, what the security fencing in the six foot there, not knowing what it is, not knowing what it's made of, not knowing the, you know, the, I guess the see-through compatibilities, it, it makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, I didn't talk to the developers about this. They never did approach our community. And, uh, you know, I, I thought this meeting was to see those things. I guess I, you know, I could have done more. I, I worry particularly about those units facing uh, the residences, uh, you know, I've, I've had garages, I've had storage units, I was in college, <laughs> needed to put stuff away and they're very loud when they go up and down. Uh, they're locked, people come in all hours of the day, I sure did, um, and I wouldn't blame them for doing so, but it's a concern for the residences. You can immediately probably think of about 13 not very happy people if they have to hear that all night. It does, our, our, our community is, is fairly quiet. Um, it is full. We do have 135 spots full. We do have all houses that are newer than 1998, so there's a, a fair amount of uh, new houses and, and, and good quality insulated houses, but we do border on the south side of railroad track as well, 
And it's not like I can insulate them from all, all sounds. I understand that. I guess I'm just looking at a reasonable uh, alternative for, for what I'm seeing there uh, so that you know, I, can, I can portray or, or at least talk to my residents appropriately about what might be placed in that space. Um, I do have some residents that, that came here tonight, didn't really want, said, hey, you, you know what we're talking about. You can, you can talk to any questions. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but uh, I am, I guess, a little bit surprised about the development, uh, how, it's, how it's faced there. Well, Mr. Chair, if I may, um, yes. to, it, would it help, you know, the, the, one of the stipulations is to provide wood or materials providing full screening. Would it help if they gave you more of a clear understanding of what that full screen means and showing to you that it won't be seen through, I guess, as far as that six foot fence goes? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, that's, that's a great point. I, I, it, yeah, I, I would like to see that, absolutely. And, you know, and plus with the security lights, from what I understand, they will be turned in. And again, maybe just more clarification and understanding of what they mean by that, and we can pull the applicant back up to maybe help explain that and get a clearer answer on those questions. Right. I, uh, you know, my concern with lighting is just that it doesn't glare into the windows. Right. Um, when I went back there tonight just to look again at, at people's houses and the windows that face back there, there are doors back there, there are patios back there, there are um, a fencing back there. So people do use that area quite a bit. Uh, in fact, some of the people have gone so far as to mow even further out, you know, just to make, just to kind of, that's not an area they use, but a liked area they like to keep clean. So yeah, I'd, that'd be good. Any other questions? Sure. Jeff, this is for a conditional use permit. What it allows us to do is maybe answer some of your questions or do some things that might help you in the neighborhood accept this. Am I hearing, are you totally against these storage units or are you concerned about what they're gonna look like, how they're gonna be screened, how they're gonna be, be lit, things like that? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. No, I'm totally not, not against it. I'm, I'm actually for it. I think that that it would be a good location for something like that if done properly. You know, the way I look at the, and if I can see how the storage units are out again, if I look at how, where I see all the 30s and, you know, what I get is a lot of traffic going in and out of there, and then at the bottom what I see is a lot of storage units going up and down. And that's what concerns me the most, I guess, is that, that type of noise that goes through fences, goes through bushes, goes into people's bedrooms. <clears throat> and what the other companies have done there is place their back edge so that there is no traffic, there are no garbage wastes, there is no work being done behind that, and it provides a natural fence. And frankly, if you have something like that, you don't need to provide as big of barriers and security fences that make our community maybe look a little bit unnatural. So if you have the roads going this way, I think you easily cut out the noise and the you know, the screening. Um, so that's, I guess, if I look at it just from a common sense point, that would be something that, you know, you could do very easily. Um, but no, I'm not, I'm not against it. I'm glad they're, they're doing something. I'm glad that it can be utilized for some, you know, and raise some tax revenue and all, and use that land, so. <laughs> when did you first find out about this, that this was gonna be? Well, to be honest, I had a, I had a, a resident come up to me and talk to me about one of the signs they said they found one of the signs in their yard. So I went over there and I looked and one sign was up and a couple signs were down and so I, then I saw the meeting and I just you know, started talking to some other people. I'm through that community probably 15 times a day. Um, <clears throat> so that's when I first found out about it. Uh, was a late, late April probably, something like that, so. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Everybody else, but I, I don't know if we can sit here. I guess we can have Eric come up and hopefully answer some more of the questions you might have. Typically what would have really, I think, been nice here was maybe some type of a neighborhood meeting to show you and the neighbors surrounding what was gonna happen here. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. 
My it really been nice here would have been maybe some sort of neighborhood brief meeting to show the plan and, and to answer some of the questions that I don't know if we can get all answered for you right here in this short period of time. Right. And I'm going to ask David to come back up when we're done here and ask why a neighborhood meeting wasn't perhaps suggested. Well, and I, I have to I have to apologize a little bit because as we talked about as I was sitting there, I didn't I didn't relay any of these phone calls. So that's that's part of on me, and I'll fully take that responsibility. But I didn't know I could <laughs> do that, and I guess I should have realized that. So, you know, I. I do apologize for that. Well, well, and Mr. Chair, if I may, you know, Jeff, I, I understand your concerns, but obviously the developer needs to um, utilize the site to its greatest ability. And so I, I understand that you may want to change a few things, but if they come up and give you the confidence that the fencing will be, um, I can't remember the word, uh, as full screened as possible in the security lights, if they go through that explanation and help you give that understanding to your tenants, um, within that neighborhood, is that something that would be sufficient to you? Because maybe that's something that he can provide tonight, and I don't know that, but we can certainly call him back up. But yeah, what, like, I think the, I think they could do something with screening and, and, and lights. Right. I, I do have a, con, a genuine concern about noise. I really do, because there's no screening really short of the physical screening of having not those doors on that side that well, in my opinion, I think it would be a good time to maybe call the applicant back up to hopefully explain some of those things, because I know there's some overhead doors that can be quieter and all that, but sure. maybe it's a good time to call him back up to do that explanation. Okay. Have we got a good understanding of some of the questions he has? Mm -hmm. Eric, just a second. Are there some other people here that would like to address this issue before we have Eric come back? Is that what you fellows are here for, is the same issue? Okay, thank you. I appreciate your time, thank you. Thanks. Eric, I don't think we're hearing that we're against this. No, I understand, and, and There's some obviously concern this has been posted for the 10 days, and in fact, I emailed Dave, and I, and I asked him, I was like, Dave, has anybody contacted you? And he said, no. And so we, you know, if, he, if anyone would have contacted him, obviously it was the people in the manufacturer, we would have went to him. Um, we just didn't think there was much of an issue. We are talking about literally the least impactive commercial use there is. Um, a site like this, and we've studied these, and I've been in front of you before with these, a site similar to this, we're talking about nine to 15 people a day visiting this site. Uh, this is not a Walmart, um, don't even go there. <laughs> this, is, this is not a C store or a gas station where, you know, 24 hour, where you have people coming all the time. Um, this is a very, uh, there's their storage units. Um, like I said, it's not lit. They're, if someone, can they get there 24 hours a day? Yeah, but. Would some, you know, are you gonna go to your storage unit at two o'clock in the morning? Maybe if there's somebody we need to check out, um, and then I think maybe a neighbor would give a call. Uh, but no, the lights aren't gonna be on, and, and, and a screening fence, obviously, we are 100% uh, in favor of a screening fence. There's actually right now some, a little bit of hedge in the back on, on, on some areas that are providing some screening by the, people in the manufactured home park, but no, we intend to put a six foot uh, opaque uh, screening fence as required uh, to screen from the residential, from commercial, a and we can work with them on the type of screening fence that that needs to be. Um, Eric, there's do you think it'd be out of line if we were to add a stipulation that they have a chance to visit with David about lighting and, and the fencing? visit with you, and if we were to say, hey, this is good with the following stipulations that Dave and his staff approve the lighting and the fencing. Well, and Mr. Chair, do you really think a stipulation is necessary, or do you think more um, just understanding his business? You know, that is his business. That we have if to submit have a site plan. conversation of this is the, the lights, these are they turn off, they turn on, and this is the fencing, and have an example that he can maybe go to his, you know, his, um, 
This is a commercial area. A photometric plan will be required. Because he would hate to lose anybody, you, you know, know, over that. So then Ob you can them and yes. explain it. So maybe if you could provide something like no, that, no. saying these turn off and on at these hours, it's securitized with a fence and, and that kind of no, item. Photometric plan will be required as this is a commercial adjacent to a residential. If you provide that to him, and then he has something in writing certainly. to go to those people that have that concern. Mm -hmm. So, no, we're, we're agreeable to, the, like I said, the stipulations that they've set forth. Um, and want this to be uh, a good fit with the neighborhood. And, and, and I, like I said, I don't think they're opposed to it. They just oh. want to make sure that it's going to look good. And like I said, it's not going to be a cobbled together thing. This, uh, I, you saw the pictures of what these units look like, and they're professionally built mm -hmm. unit. Look nice. Uh, and How big is this site? Is this uh, more than an acre? Yeah, it's more than an acre. Two. It is 2.01 acres, so two acres site. Mr. Chair, if I may, one other item I forgot to bring up, excuse me for um, just the, the sound of the overhead doors as well. I know that was a concern. Again, if I think you can just have that conversation with him and explain that, you know, I don't know how you explain overhead door sounds, but um, maybe have that conversation and just sure. show him that maybe the noise level wouldn't be as great as like maybe said, the concern we're, is. We're, we're talking, I, I hope that. they understand uh, that this is not something that, that 50 people an hour come in and open their doors up and down, and, and obviously from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., they can open them and close them as much as they want. And I think uh, but helpful to have understand that, that and, and I think they're, they're probably pretty, you know, these are not uh, obnoxious type door. I don't think that, that you're gonna hear from a long ways away, so. Uh, but we're, like I say, we wanna fit into the neighborhood, not not be uh, a detriment to the neighborhood. So, thank you, Eric. David, Thanks. could we uh, chat with you for just a second? David, what typically spears a little bit of a neighborhood meeting? Would a call from Jeff early in this process? Well, you know, I, I, I'll. First, I'll describe what our notification process is. You know, we, we have the signposting requirement for 10 days. We send letters out to everybody within 300 feet of a conditional use permit application. And you do send letters out for conditional use? Yes, we do. Okay. Yep. And I, I believe that the applicant said that he thinks he remembers getting that letter too, but they obviously were notified by the signage as well. So, um, <clears throat> you know, our office's standing policy is that we always recommend a neighborhood meeting. Even with some of the consent agenda items, I had that conversation with some of the applicants is that, you know, even if you think that you may not need it, we always recommend it. And, you know, perhaps we didn't specifically say that this time, but we, the, you know, that is something that we've said over and over and over again, you know, through our processes. And so, you know, just to have that conversation. And so there, you know, there are a number of mechanisms through which people are able to come to these meetings or contact our office in advance, you know, to get the description of it. I think it made it a little easier on us and the applicant and, and, and these folks here that could have maybe answered a lot of their questions. But and if they hadn't agreed, they'd have some specific to come back and say, hey, here's a concern to us or here isn't a concern to us. Yep. How, how would you recommend we proceed here? Well, you know, I mean, there's a couple of things as far as um, you know, the specific type of fencing. We have in the past had conditions placed on it where the planning office has a role in the final approval of that material, you know, and, and so that's a stipulation that you could add where we would make sure that the applicant and uh, the representatives of the manufactured home park, you know, have had the chance to converse and, and come to an agreement, hopefully, and if not, but you know, then the planning office would give the final sign off then on that. Um, the noise issue, there are noise ordinances in place, you know, from the health department that, you know, there's spe specific decibel requirements that can't be exceeded, you know, at certain distances, and I don't have those in front of me. Um, but, you know, so that if there were large concerns with that type of noise, th there are mechanisms through which the city can take measurements and address any of those um, concerns as well. I think, you know, the lighting, the lighting is something that you, they're not allowed to have lighting spill over onto the residential areas anyway. Um, but in the specific sphere of how they're oriented, you know, it sounds like they're going to be on the building. You can add that as a specific stipulation that they not have pole lighting, that it's, you know, oriented 
to the building and not to the south or something like that, you know, to that effect. And I mean, that's going to be where, you, you know, you kind of have a role in exactly how you want those stipulations to read. And that would be part of your discussion, too. So. Well, just speaking for myself, I think it looks like a nice project. I think even these folks are in favor of it. Mm -hmm. I think there's just some questions about, hey, what's it going to do to certainly the neighborhood that abuts it? Right. And I'm not sure what their comfort range would be. I, I, I would like to say if we had a stipulation making it subject to you guys approving the fencing, the lighting, have a chance to show them what have Eric show you and you show them, mm -hmm. I, I, I'd like to, like to think that that'd make them feel comfortable. Mr. Uh, Chair, but we can't let the uh, residents say this is the only fence that's going to be approved either. I mean, we, we're asking for a wooden fence and the stipulation says a six foot high fence that's opaque, it's wooden or of a good similar materials. With full screen. Yeah, right. if they don't like the color, we can't, I mean, mm -hmm. this is the owner. We can't put too many stipulations on the owner so he cannot provide a good product too, so. I mean, you know, and I think as far as the fencing is concerned, that there is the condition on the report already that covers, mm -hmm. you know, that issue. The lighting, the noise is covered already by city ordinance, um, you know, and the lighting, you can be specific, you know, as to how it's oriented and, the, and where it's located too. For example, we could say on the lighting issue that no lights face south. You can, you can stipulate that, you know, and you can stipulate that, you know, no lights are on poles, no, you know, and they're all um, oriented to the building. I mean, you'd have to, I, I would advise you to have that discussion with the applicant mm -hmm. too, as to what, you know, and what they're agreeable to as well. And, and I mean, or at least what their thoughts are. I mean, you can still ultimately place whatever conditions you want on them, but. And I, but just from his uh, testimony, I think he's a, Agreeing that no lights on poles is just fine, but it's whether the which direction they face might be something for him to yeah. chime in on. Adjust. Yep. I think it though um, that if we stipulated none on the south side, we're creating a dead space there. That I think there would could be create some sec security issues. Yep. No, I, not on the south side. If lights not pointing south, you you know you can. I mean, again, you know, there is an ordinance in place. I mean, just to remind you that the that the lighting spill can't over. spill over onto the onto the residential property. And, you know, so I mean, and if there are issues with glare, you know, I'm sure the applicant would be willing to help address those issues as they come up. And you know, our office would certainly play a role in um, helping facilitate that conversation. So. Any other questions for David? Thank you, David. Thanks. Jeff? I really don't mean to take a second bite at the apple. I just really wanted to express that one of my main concerns, I really think that, and I've done development projects, I've in fact worked with Shauna Goldhammer several times on, on making mobile home parks and manufactured home parks the best they can be, but uh, I'm really concerned about noise. I mean, if it lights we can fix, screening, I'm, you know, we can, we can work with. I don't want to saddle the developer with any unnecessary costs, uh, but I'm, I am concerned about a Harley pulling in at number 460 right there and, you know, after he's been at the bars or whatever and, and, and you know, waking up every, you know, three, four people I, or whatever it is. I mean, but I'm, that's my biggest concern is the noise there and, and that's something that I just, I guess I wanted to re-express um, from the, the residents as well as myself point of view. Jeff, there's a limit, I think, to what we can anticipate and expect might or might not happen. Uh, it could be the other way around. Uh, you know, that's where we kind of look for management. You might have one of your uh, residents come back, come in late with sure, the motorbike. Sure, absolutely. Or and I think that's where you have to kind of say, well, there's a source you can go to. You can certainly make your complaint, but we're very dependent on management to keep that sort of stuff. The problem is, I, you know, the, the problem I have is that I won't, I would, I wouldn't mind doing the complaining if I had to complain, but it's going to be the people who are living there that are going to complain. And, I, you know, I, Will they complain to you, Jeff? Or? Oh, yeah, and that's fine. You know, that, that'd be fine. 
Then you can complain to David. <laughs> well, I, uh, Jeff, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I think your, your worries of, of the noise is uh, not as significant as you are, are, are beginning to think because you worried about that Harley pulling in there at 11 o'clock at night. Okay. What about that Harley driving down Sage Lane at 11 o'clock at night? Right. Sure. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's the same scenario there. Yes. And you do have that repercussion of the noise ordinance. If it is, uh, the, you have the local police to, to call and say, hey, this, this it's very noisy back here. This guy's running his, just sitting there revving his Harley up at 9 o'clock at night. And you have that recourse at that point, or the, or the uh, residents do right. have that recourse. Right. I, I see a, if I can offer just one solution, and I don't know how far along they are in the project, but if, it, if the backs did face um, the residents' homes, you could eliminate a lot of the noise potential, the um, security potential, the screening fence costs, if, the, if it were just moved at a 90-degree angle and still maintain, and I don't know how many units are there, I would suspect... How many units are there? Do you know? But they have to drive around it. They but just drive in main, any way you go, they have to drive around it. Right, but then the noise wouldn't be funneled down straight through to the to the to the residents, where the noise would go off to the sides, at parallel to that of Rice Street. That that's just a thought. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Anyone else here that would like to address this item? Seeing none, I'd look for a motion. With that, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve item number 16 with the two stipulations in place. I feel um, confident that the ordinance that are already in place will help to support any concerns that he may have. So, uh, We have a motion from Commissioner Anderson. I'll second that. Second from Commissioner Gasper. Discussion? I think we've talked it over. We Seeing did. none, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Was that item number 16? Yes, sir. So item number 17, Steve. Item 17 is also a storage project, <clears throat> Wheel City Storage, and it's located uh, on 401 North Marion Road. It's a, currently a kind of an automobile storage lot, uh, a portion of it is, paved for that purpose. It also has a, an existing screen or a fence around uh, the property. It has existing landscaping in the front yard setbacks as well as along the rear of the property. Uh, does have access to a private road uh, currently that you would come off on the west side uh, from a private road to access phase one of the development. This is the existing uh, improvements on the site right now uh, with the landscaping and the hard surfacing. Uh, the north portion of the property uh, is not developed or not finished uh, or improved and would become phase two in the, in the overall plan. The plan for the layout of units does run the units uh, uh, parallel to the manufactured home park with the backside and so all of the uh, pretty much uh, the noise considerations just mentioned uh, would be solved in a different manner. It appears to be a good solution. Uh, additional landscaping is provided in the future along with uh, required setbacks. The setback conditions are met now by the fence. It's the building that has to be set back further because of the length of the building. And so that is shown on the plan. It does meet the requirements of the, of the zoning ordinance. It also indicates meeting the requirements of landscaping. And in the, in the future, they would also 
uh, not have to fence a portion of the property because in that phase two, because the back side of the units would actually uh, form the screening portion of the project. So it seems to be a good solution. Uh, we did have uh, a representative of the manufactured home park stop in the office today to talk about access because it is a shared access off the private road to the west. I believe they talked to uh, uh, Public Works uh, about, about that situation and uh, came to an understanding. I don't know if they're present this evening or not. So the existing use for motor vehicle storage would go away. Uh, the storage unit, individual uh, storage rental units would be developed in phases, phase one as shown on your plan and phase two also shown on your plan. Future access would be off of Fifth Street, uh, so they, uh, the primary access would go out to a public street rather than from the private drive. Both access points would be gated, and the people in the manufactured home park would have direct access to the storage units, so there seems to be a plus there. That concludes staff report. Staff is recommending approval, and we have two conditions. One had to do with public sidewalk along Marion Road, and the second one that building finishes to be factory applied earth tone colors would give you the quality of project that the city would like to see. That concludes staff report. Thank you, Steve. Would there be any questions of Steve? Steve, do you have a rendering of what it looks like? I do not. Okay. When you say they're sharing the driveway, that would be with the property to the west. North Country View Place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's coming in from... Uh, uh, be the southwest corner of the property. It'll have no access from Marion Road. That's correct. It's a limited access arterial street. Future access in phase two would come off of West 5th. He said, I'm sorry, future access? Mm -hmm. so well, they have access now, but it's it's unimproved portion of the site. It's, and it's that's dirt. not Paradise Place, is that correct? Oh, no. They'll have a gate on that side for fire emergency vehicle access, but uh, that will not be their principal access because they're not improving a driveway out to the 5th. Um, they're going to use that southwest so it corner. Would still, oh, I can't say if it's still secured then even from that road is that correct or they could they could have access from that road that's correct yeah thank you would there be any other questions for steve i do have a question i see here that it's um only mentions that there's a chain link fence that exists that will remain um, with future apartments i think to the west is that an improvement that would be required by the apartment complex or possibly by the storage unit owner correct i would have to be required of the storage unit project all they have is landscaping in there now that's all they have this is all they Steve, have. Uh, on the one before this we're requiring are they we're recommending a solid fence between that particular storage unit across the road. and the mobile home park this one we're not like I mentioned, the, it's the, the operational side of the storage unit is facing away from the, from the uh, residential units. It's the back side. The back side is against the hillside. There's actually a hillside there that drops off and, and they are putting in the back side of the storage units against that hillside. So the screening is, you know, really doesn't resolve much. Technically, they would uh, probably move their fence if it was a new project, but we're not, we don't require removing existing fences. And I think the, the screening takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Steve? Oh, with the petitioner, is the petitioner here?
name is Jim Stewart. I'm with uh, Daylight Investments in Wheel City Auto. And uh, if anybody has any questions, one thing I would like to say about the fencing that is currently in place does have slats in the chain link. So it does provide some screening where the hill isn't quite so high. But on phase two, the hill is fairly steep. So the most they would see is the roof of the storage unit. So you have some natural fencing there. Yes, 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 ma'am. Jim, I've been by the site. Is it currently being used as car storage? Yes, we actually have it leased to another company. Uh, we, in the past, had used it for storage. And uh, of course, we always, everything was always neatly placed and stuff right now, but yes, Just it is. Just to store some mobile homes there every once in a while, or? No. Okay. It's your, tra it's, it's your trailer mobile home park? No, it is not. It is we not actually park. own the private road to our property line goes clear over against the mobile home park. And we've always shared access and never had any issues with the trailer park. I actually know Brian, that's their maintenance guy, and had a good relationship with him. Uh, any other questions for Jim? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Seeing no one else, <laughs> Chair would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 17 with the stipulations that are printed, I believe. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Yep. We have a motion and we have a second. Discussion. All our questions have been answered. Yep. All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. That is the end of our agenda this evening. Chair would entertain a motion yeah. for adjournment. Yeah. Yeah. Have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Meeting adjourned. All right. See you next month. Good evening. <laughs> How are you doing? You at least have a top coat on where you're not freezing. I know it. I forgot my hat. <laughs> I brought my gold in here. Freezer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Usually I clean the medicine with it.